Shalom, everybody out there. This is Jared Jacobs with Cradle of Hope Ministries. Um, we have another show for you today. A couple of quick announcements. I'm going to be putting, uh, I think I have the ministry email address that's in the description. I'll put mine there as well. We, uh, we want to be sure everybody has an opportunity to understand about our quarterly meetings. Every three months, we gather to Fairfield, Illinois, from all across the country. Uh, even some people outside the country come to these quarterly meetings. And that's when we all come together and we see uh, what God has dropped into the bucket of the leadership of this ministry. Uh, for those that have never been able to come to the quarterly, like to invite you, you can get more information by emailing myself or emailing the office. Um, and, you know, God is present. There's a, a lot of Christians upon this earth that I've actually never seen. Make sure you mute that have actually never seen a miracle before with their eyes. And so um, with God being present at these meetings, um, miracles do happen and they can happen and do happen. And so I believe everybody that's a believer in Christ needs to have the opportunity to experience that. And so you can have that at the, at the quarterly meeting. So what we've been doing, let me make sure I got my thing going. Go to um, Job chapter eight. Job chapter eight. Hold on a second. Can you join and come? Hold on, let me. Um, I'm trying to handle something. Just uh, join right back in. So I, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to boot you real quick, and then just join back in. Okay. I didn't want to say your name, but just join back in, and then it'll be fine when you come back. Okay. Uh, or just drop and join. All right, so we've been talking, sorry about that, guys. We've been talking about the thorn in the flesh. And so um, I want to spend a little time talking about what that means uh, and what that thorn means. So when we say the thorn in the flesh, this is obviously in Scripture. We'll get to this at some point throughout this series. But the thorn are, is basically a representation of troubles, um, troubles, basically hardships that we have with it. Hold on one second. All right. It basically represent troubles. They represent hardships. They, and that could be physical. That could be things that, you know, you know, like one leg is longer than the other, or, you know, you, you have, we all have imperfections within our flesh, man. We all have things that we have to experience throughout our lifetimes. Um, and that is what we're talking about as being a thorn. OK, and so within Christianity today, all right, in the in the age that we're in, the charismatic movement, the, 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 the greater church community and televangelism and things like that uh, has really pushed the notion that because you're saved, because you have eternal life, then you can achieve a place upon this earth where you virtually have no troubles. You can have a, a life where. Um, you experience no type of pain, no type of discomfort, and you can just have that best life now where the devil can't come anywhere near, near you. And so that builds up this, this mindset that people have that because God is such a loving God, and he is, and that God is such a merciful God, and he is, then we, we believe that he would not let anything um, uncomfortable or anything inside any type of hardship to come into our lives because that is the only picture that we have of the God that we serve and and although God is loving and merciful and he is he has chosen in his infinite wisdom uh, to use hardships and troubles as we are calling it as a thorn to teach us certain things and we're going to go through we've been using Job and the story of Job as an example of seeing how that process works. But I wanna be sure everybody understands what we mean by thorn. That could be physical things, that could be things that you experience um, you know, in your body, things that you experience at your workplace, things you experience within people, um, and, and, and that can amount to a lot of different things, all right? Now, that's the first point. The second point, as before, as we go into this lesson with this is the intro, the second point is to understand that they, we have to mature using the word and using these these lessons that we're teaching to mature to a place where we have to understand that that thorn is something that we actually need and that we have to come to a place where we're actually comfortable not necessarily comfortable but we're able to 
um, cope and able to live and able to be have peace. That's what I wanted to say, that we have peace with those ailments, with those uh, discomforts, with whatever that is that comes into our lives. We have to be comfortable with those things being there because we understand the purpose that it is there for. All right. And I know that might not make a whole lot of sense to some people, but I want to throw that out there is that we're moving you towards um, God, get me out of this situation to Lord God. I understand what it is that you're trying to teach me with this. Help me to understand, help me to learn, help me to gain the experience that I need through this thorn so that I can be more prepared for what you have for me after. OK, and that's what we need to get to. So, again, um, we were told and keep going. Go to Job 8. Sorry, I had like a, some technical stuff in the beginning. Go to Job chapter 8. We are told by the word that to whom much is given, much is required. We actually looked at that in the first part of the, uh, the series, the first lesson that we did a couple weeks ago. To whom much is given and much is required. And we took that a little step further to say, as you guys being Ephraim, OK, as you is for some of you that are new, when I say Ephraim, uh, in this last uh, times, in these last days upon this earth, before Yeshua comes back to this earth, before the mark of the beast, before the tribulation period, before all those things, as we go through these things, God is gathering up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These are the descendants of um, those children of God that were dispersed um, way back in the times of Solomon all, all over the face of the earth. And God promised in those last days to begin to gather the sins of those people, God's people, God's children, the remnant in these last days to gather us, us back, similar to what he did in the times of Moses, to rebuild and restore the nation of Israel as it as it was, was before the split of that kingdom. OK, and that's what we mean by Ephraimite. So you have been chosen. You have been given an opportunity to participate in this. So that means you have been given much. But that also means because you have been given that much responsibility, um, you're going to be required to experience uh, thorns, experience more things than people that are may not be chosen because you have a responsibility to help push this great move of God forward. We all play a part. We all have different skill sets that God has placed within our lives. And in order for us to hone those skills, in order for us to refine ourselves into the person God needs us to be, the requiring is what we're looking at. And Job is the example in the word that we're going to use for today's lesson. Okay, now um, let's talk about that too. A step further, okay, so we, we, we talked about to whom much is given. We talked about the Ephraimite angle of that. But as, as Christianity, that's also to whom much is given because we have eternal life. They have eternal life. As a believer in Yeshua, you have the, uh, the, the opportunity to have eternal life once you pass from this fleshly body that we are in. And because of that, you are going to be allowed to experience an onslaught from darkness from times and from time to time in your life, okay? And that's just the way the game is played. And we looked at that last week with Job. We'll continue to look at this, and I'll bring out some points just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Job lost his cattle. He lost his children. He lost his businesses. He literally lost everything that he had. And we are going to pick up in Job chapter 8 where uh, he's in the mindset where he kind of wish he wasn't even born kind of wish he kind of died right when he came out of the womb and his friends are trying to encourage him, but he's in a state where he just can't understand why he's going through the things that he's going through. We'll start in verse 20 of Job chapter eight. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, a mature man, a righteous man. Neither will he help the evildoers. Okay. So we started out, we have a series where we talk about the children of light, God's children, the children of darkness and the children of this world. There are people upon this earth, because as I go through this series and we talk about how um, God has a process to refine and to grow his children. Right. Um, and hardships are part of that. But there are, are many people upon this earth that are evildoers that God ain't going to help. It doesn't matter. OK, the times when you go to the book of Revelation, you see all the things and the turmoil and the death and destruction that's going to come. That comes. And the evildoers are going to be the recipients of those judgments because they're evildoers. And that's something that you need to understand. OK, 
this doesn't really pertain to those that are outside of um, following the Lord God of Israel. Okay, the people that are of darkness, and many of them upon this earth, there's many of them on the movies and the shows and the 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 TV programs we watch. A lot of these people in Hollywood, I mean, a lot of you guys know this. These are children of darkness. God ain't gonna help them when them times come. But you and I, the end for us is different. Okay, so God is trying to get Job to understand that He will not completely leave the righteous as you go through these things that you're going through. And some of us, and some of you that are listening. Um, some of you've reached out to us via email or whatever. You guys are going through some things right now, whether it be physical, whether it be people that are in your homes or whatever the case is. God is not going to completely leave you, even though you may feel that way. God is always in here and he promised he would never leave nor forsake. But there will be a feeling of distance from him so that God can see what it is you're going to do. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? So again, there's there's people that God is just not, it's not funny, but it's truth. There are some people upon this earth, you know, you know when, you, when you see things that happen with tornadoes, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, you see a lot of these things happen on the news in some of these different places around the world as it talks about happening in Matthew 24, uh, as beginning the beginning of sorrows. Um, these things happen. And God will allow that to happen because these people are not under the protection of God's holy covenant. They are outside of that. They choose to live their lives um, in opposition to what God's word commands. And I'm sorry to say that makes them evildoers. Not that these people are not nice. They're not cordial. Doesn't matter. The choices that we make, the way that we choose to live our lives, if that is in direct opposition to what God's word says, I'm sorry, that makes you an enemy of God and makes you an evildoer. But for those that are righteous, meaning those that have attached themselves to the God of Israel through his holy son, Yeshua, you're trying to, to live your life in a way that is reflective of what God's word says, we got a shot, all right? And we always will. Job chapter 10, go to Job chapter 10. God knows our heart and we as humans, especially as adults in America, we are very trained to present ourselves to other people in the way that we want them to see us. We talk, we use a certain words, we hug, we use handshakes, we're very nice, we show nice gestures because we want people to see us a certain way. God sees through that. He sees right down into the very thoughts that we have and the true feelings we have towards other people, all right, and even towards him. He knows how we're going to uh, react to certain things. So in order to do that, as a, as a potter molds that clay, he's going to mold us in certain ways. If he knows that he needs us to be more loving, or he knows he needs us to be less rebellious, or he knows he needs us to uh, be less selfish, care more about others and their needs more than our own needs, then God's going to allow things to happen. He's going to allow when Satan comes and he says, hey, that Ephraimite down there has been kind of reading the word and they've been confessing that they believe the Lord God for uh, peace in their life or they believe the Lord God for to, to provide them with with a healthy life. Let me go down and let me test what it is that they say that they believe and they're standing up on that word for. And the Lord God in his plan for you and I will say, OK, have at it with certain boundaries. And then that will begin to happen in your life. And you're sitting there and some of us would think, why would God do something like that? Again, he's not going to completely leave you. He's not going to let you go down. But again, in order for you to learn what it is that we need to learn, because like myself, I'm very hard headed. I have to go through some stuff for me to be for God to get me to understand that's not the way I want you to do that. Not that that's not the direction that I didn't want you to go but that ain't the way I want you to do it. And the way that I learn things like that is I, you know, my, my wife knows me, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it like that. I fall flat on my face, don't work out, take a couple steps back. That took about two months. Okay, God, I understand that didn't work out. Okay, so let me try it again the way that I pretty much knew you wanted me to do it. And then I will do that. But it takes the, the failing it takes the falling down on the face. It takes the humbling. It takes the thorn, the uncomfortable situations, the losing of money, the, the, the health things that pop up. It takes those things for us to understand 
the direction and the way that God needs us to live. Because some of us are hard headed and I got my hand up before anybody else. Job chapter 10, I'm going to start in the first verse, okay? Let's listen to what it is that he's saying as he's trying to understand why he's going through this stuff. My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. That's what we pray. I'm going to come back to that. But he's trying to figure out, where did I screw up, God? Verse 3, it is good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thy hands and shine upon the counsel of the wicked. Has thou eyes of flesh, or seest thou as a man seeth? Are the days as the days of man, or are thy years as man's days? Thou that, that thou inquirest after my iniquity and searchest after my sin. This is, God, this is Job trying to understand. He's, he's throwing out rhetorical things to the Lord God as he's in this, his troubles. Verse 7, thou knowest that I'm not wicked, and that there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me together round about, yet dost thou destroy me? God is asking, or Job is asking God, because he feels this way, and sometimes we do, God, are you intentionally trying to destroy me? Are you intentionally and maliciously trying to bring me down to nothing? And that's the way Job was feeling. And I don't think anybody in that, that you know, prophet talked about this on the CDs. And I didn't talk about this in the beginning, but in this ministry, we, we, we teach ministry materials. This is the series that we're going through, the thorn of the flesh. OK, you can always reach out to our office through the email addresses that are there and, and inquire about the donation amounts for that for the materials. Um, but, you know, that book of Job is there. So that for us as believers, when we get into situations where, um, you know, we can use health things or whatever it is, stuff flares up or, you know, we, we have that confession of, Lord God, I thank you that I'm completely whole and healed and that I walk in health. And then you get something that flares up in your body or something that happens. You're sitting there like, why is that happening? You know, I'm, an, I'm a child of God. I, I read the word. I try to do what I can. I confess the right scriptures. What am I doing wrong? Why did this happen in my body? Or why did this happen in my life? And you're sitting there and you're like, why would, why would God allow this to happen to me? I don't understand. Is it the, the ministry has been teaching that if I keep Sabbath and the festivals that I'll be blessed and nothing to happen to me. But again, we, that, that's that, that mindset that we've uh, acquired coming out of the churches that we've come from, that no harm will ever come near me. Not harm as in harm as in the, you know, harming the, your life or threatening your life or things like that. But we're just talking about troubles. No hardships will come. And that's the mindset that we have when we go through and we read about the promises of God and we read about the, the, the full protection of Psalms 91. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing outside the word about that. But understand, in order to get to those promises, God's got to let you go through some stuff, man. I gave the example of me and how hard headed I am. You know, if God allows me to start a new venture and the first thing that I do, it takes off and it has success and I never had to go through any type of failures or any type of road bumps, then I wouldn't have learned anything. You understand what I'm saying? In order for you to know what truly works in your life and how God's work can help you to become successful, you have to also understand what does not work, right? When you know what doesn't work, when you know how uh, you tried to do something outside the way God commands you to do it and you fell flat on your face and it didn't work and you had egg all over your face because you figured you found a shortcut and you didn't have to do it the way the word told you to do it. When you do that, and you fall on your face, you know, OK, that's not the way God wants that done. Let me take a couple of steps back. Let me dust myself off. May have to eat a little dose of humble pie because I was telling everybody and confessing that this is what's going to happen. It's going to happen exactly like this because I'm confessing the word and that's exactly the way God's going to make it happen. And when it don't happen that way, you got to eat that humble pie and you got to say, OK, God, let's go through this the way that you want it done. And as I'm going through it, yes, this sucks. Yes, I don't want to do with it. I don't have to deal with this. This is not what I envisioned talking to somebody. This is not what I envisioned before I started upon this journey of whatever that is. It's not the way I envisioned it, but it doesn't matter. The end thereof 
is the promises and the blessings if you go through it with the right heart, with the way God wants you to do that. It's not a God's fault. It's not hidden him being a big meanie to you. It's him using the situation to teach you the things that you felt like you didn't need to be taught because we already knew everything, don't we? We're Americans. We know everything. Go to verse nine. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as clay. I said that earlier. And wilt thou bring uh, me to dust again? How's thou now poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh and hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Verse 12, thou hast granted me life and favor and thy visitation has reserved my spirit, my spirit. And these things thou hast hid in thine heart. I know that this is with thee. I want you to pay attention to verse 14, okay? If I sin, then thou markest me and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. There, there's a couple scriptures that we're going to read today. Um, Prophet always mentioned throughout the CDs and the series that there's always a penalty that must be paid for the sins and the things that we do contrary to God's word. It's a, it's a lot. We're going to read two today. This is one of them. I'll call out the other one when we get there. But it's important to know, again, like I talked about, when we mess up, when we sin, yes, we can pray and ask God for forgiveness through the, the, the sacrifice that his holy son Yeshua made. We can have forgiveness of that sin, but that penalty must be paid. God's not going to fully equip, equip you, all right, or just wipe that so that you don't have to pay the consequences. You don't have to experience the results of you doing things outside of the way God commands, all right? So remember that. Yes, um, Nope, I'm going I'm to come back to that. Verse 15, if I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. I am full of confusion. Therefore, see thou my affliction. Has anybody ever been full of confusion? We know confusion is not of God. But again, we also know through this process that we've read with Job, that when these type of situations come up, we know darkness was allowed to come in and mess with your life, mess with my life. God allowed that to happen. So yeah, darkness will try to come and bring confusion, bring doubt, bring sadness, bring the thoughts of God doesn't love me anymore. Nobody else cares about me. These are the thoughts and the feelings that darkness is trying to push into your mind because that's what they like to do. They understand that is the starting point for you to go down the path of failure, of going down, of leaving God, of walking away from righteousness, of walking away from the things that you know to be truth in God's word, that's where that starts. And so many times people will reach out to the ministry through email. I've heard this through churches in my past that I've been a part of where people get into these situations and they feel so offended that God will allow such a thing to happen to me that I'm not going to do this church thing no more. This stuff doesn't work. I've heard that many times too. This stuff with a covenant and commandments doesn't work. It says that I'm going to be rich and I'm going to have health and peace and I'm going to, you know, live this big lavish lifestyle. And yet I'm sitting here dealing with all this stuff. It's hard to pay the bills. I got stuff going on with my health. I got stuff going on with my marriage. I got stuff going on with my kids, so on and so forth. Okay, just using examples. But people, again, don't understand. You will achieve those things, but it ain't no golden road shortcut for you to walk through and get to that without going through anything. And I think that's the big fallacy. That's the big um, indictment upon the church is they've used that God is loving. God is merciful. Nothing's going to ever happen to you mantra with the people because that from a I'm a marketing person. OK, that's what I do for a living. I market that is the messaging that brings the greatest amount of financial benefit to the ministry that is saying so those things. I hope that makes sense to somebody. If you continue to push that, then people get excited. They give their money. More people get excited because they are being told something that is a half truth. Nowhere in God's word did he say you will never endure troubles if you are righteous. In fact, it says the opposite. Those that be righteous will endure temptations or tribulations. It says that in the word. 
All right. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring things back into balance. We got people that are new. We're way over here on the the God prosperity and nothing's going to happen side. And then we've got some people that are kind of going through things and you're over here where God doesn't love me and God's left me for dead. And God, you know, let's bring this into the balance of, yes, we will get to the blessings. No, God hasn't left you. But this is the understanding of that thorn that's been placed into your side. And remember what I said in the intro, that thorn is the situation that you're dealing with or have dealt with in the past and it comes it has come back around again. It is there for you to experience the pain to learn from that pain. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I don't think I recorded this, but I was talking to uh, the local group here and I used this analogy. OK, and I think it's it's going to be good to insert this here when most people that have. OK, let's say if you're if you're pretty much over the age of 25, probably 20, you've gone on some sort of diet and exercise routine. I'm just going to go out on a limb and just say most of us have tried at least some form of exercise of running, jogging, lifting weights, um, whatever, Pilates, push ups, whatever you're doing. OK, and. The reason why I want to use that with, with this, what we're doing with the thorn in the flesh is because when you go through and you do these exercises, you know that because of that, you're going to be sore. You're going to experience uncomfortableness as you're doing whatever exercises that you're doing, whether you're jogging on a track, doing push-ups, lifting weights. You know that you're pushing your body, you're pushing your flesh past the point that it is used to of being lazy up on the couch or on the computer chair that I'm sitting at now. You know that going into it, but why is it that you continue to push forward with that? Because you understand that the pain that you're going through during those exercises has a benefit and a result that you want to get to, right? So you understand going into the exercise or going into the gym or going into the track that I wanted my body to look like this. I want to lose this much weight. I want my blood pressure to regulate or whatever it is your goal is. You know going into it, yeah, there's going to be some pain involved. But as we've all heard in the past and we all know this, no pain, no gain. We know that when it comes to exercise or even dieting, that there's going to be some uncomfortableness, but we understand the result. We understand the benefit. Now, take that understanding and bring it into the realm of the thorn of the flesh with you and your life, okay? No pain, no gain, okay? No trial, no blessing, no growth, no wisdom, okay? It's the same thing. So, yes, you know, when I, I use the example of stuff I go through at my job and, you know, stuff that I go through in my business, um, yeah, I understand that there's going to be some stuff that I really didn't feel like dealing with, okay? I come home, I eat. After nine, 10 hours of work, come home, kiss the wife and kids, eat dinner, try to sit down and watch 20, 30 minutes of TV with the wife and the kids. And then I'm right back in the office and I'm working till two o'clock in the morning because stuff keeps, you know, happening that I wish would not happen. But the Lord God needs me or has to have me to understand some things. So I got to go through the pain to get to the gain. All right. I hope that helps somebody with the analogy of exercise and pain and results, with the thorn in your flesh, with your life, with your health, with your, your business, with your, your relationships, whatever it is, it's the same thing, all right? God is using that situation to beef up your spiritual muscle, all right? Hopefully, <laughs> I hope that made sense. He needs to find out what is in your heart. God needs you to understand that. Obviously, God knows everything, but you and I, have this thing where, ah, oh, man, you know, we use this example when we talk about the fruit of the spirit. I love everybody. I'm a pretty cool person. You know, I get along with people. I don't really need to work on love. Don't really need to work on patience that much. Well, you don't really truly understand patience until you start having kids. That's for one. But, you know, there's always a different level that God's bringing you to. And he needs you to go through that situation for you to understand, wow, I'm not as patient as I thought I was. Or, wow, I'm not as loving as I thought I was. Because, yes, I can get along with people. You're doing a lot of stuff right there. I can, I can get along with people just fine. I can be cordial. But when they start needing help, right, 
and I got to mess up my routine or come out of my pocket or mess up, you know, burn my gas to come pick you up and to help you because there's a brother or sister in need. You know, I really ain't got time for that. Yeah, I love you. I'll, you know, hey, how you doing, brother? You know, I'll send you an email and say I'm praying for you, even though I'm not. But I really don't want to inconvenience myself to come out of what I'm doing to come help you. God needs you to see that's the way that your heart really is by allowing something to come forth. I'm teaching myself right now by allowing something to come forth in the community that you're in so that you and I and all of us that are in this thing of Ephraim can see where our heart really is. Hmm. I'm preaching slice. All right. I'll pick up back in verse 16. Okay. But there's a prayer that we will pray okay, as, as believers, when we get into these things and we see Job saying the same prayer and it goes something like this, Lord, show me where I'm sinning so that I can get out of this mess. We've, had, we've all had some form of that, okay? Lord, show me where I'm messing up. And I'm gonna rephrase that prayer to what it is that we're really trying to get to. Lord, give me a shortcut where I don't have to deal with this anymore and I could just get around it and go on to something else and that's better. That's what we really want. But again, we are using these lessons. We are using this to teach through the word, my Bible's right here, through the word that you understand that that pain, that situation, it's just the working out that you're doing. It's the exercise. That's the pain, it's the exercise. Put your mind on, you know, and I'm, I'm a guy. So when I work out, I'm thinking about, you know, bigger arms or, you know, smaller waist or, you know, bigger chest. That's what you're thinking about when you're sitting there and, you're, and your arms are burning and your, you know, your muscles are, are, are tight and they're sore. You're thinking about that result. That's what we have to do when we're going through this stuff. Even where you are right now, think about the promises that God has in that word that's right over there. It's, it's, it's somewhere past where you are now. It will end. It will come to an end. You will not be in that situation forever. It will come to an end, but you have to make sure that you learn what it is that God needs you to learn, because if you don't, it's going to come circle back around maybe a year later, maybe six months later, maybe three years later, it will come back around. The names, the places, the dates will change, but it will be the same situation because we still ain't getting it what God needs us to get. Verse 16, I will continue. For it increaseth, thou huntest me as a fierce lion. And again, excuse me, thou showest thyself marvelous upon me. Thou renewest thy witnesses against me and increaseth thy indignation upon me. Changes and war are against me. Wherefore, then thou hast brought me forth out of the womb. Why, do, why was I even born? Oh, that I had given up the ghost and no eye had seen me. Job felt so bad that he's even wondering would it have been better if he had just died before he came out of his mother's womb or as he came out of his mother's womb. Verse 19, I should have been as though as I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease then, and let me alone, that I may take a comfort a little. Before I go, whence shall I return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death? My man feeling bad. Verse 22. A land of darkness, as darkness itself, and a shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is as darkness. He's wondering, why was I even born, God? Was it even worth it? I told my wife this, go to Job chapter 11. I want to do a little bit more. Go to Job chapter 11. I told my wife this and I was, you know, I was kind of go studying through the lesson and reading through it. And I told her, you know, when we read these, these stories in the Bible, okay, understand that these aren't bedtime stories. These aren't fairy tales. These are real accounts from people that lived thousands of years before us. Okay. There were spirits that were just sent down here before we were, and they lived out and God chronicled their lives and the things that they went through as an example to us. Okay. That's what we're talking about when we're going through the word. But what I told her was I said, you know, Slice, when we read these scriptures, we read the story of Job, we read it as knowing the end from the beginning. We know in life and existence, God knows the end from the beginning. But when we're able to go into the scriptures, we're able to go to Job, you know, at the end of the story and say, oh, 
Well, Joe went through all that because he got double in the end. So why is Joe feeling like this in verses in chapters 12 and 13 and 20? And then over here at the end of the book, he gets everything plus double because we know the end result before as we're reading the story. OK, and if we're able to take that same mentality and bring it to our own lives and know by faith, you may not know the exact end because that's set sometime in the future. At least God tell, uh, you know, a prophet or somebody to reveal that unto you. But if you take that same mentality, knowing that God's no respecter of persons, if he did that for Job and Job was faithful through it, then my end will be like Job's end. Even though I can't see it, I know through the word and by faith, it will be the same. So, and I, and I felt like that was really cool, you know, because we were able to go into the word and we're able to see, even with the children of Israel, we're able to see what the end was, what the promises were as we're reading the story. So when we go through and we're like, man, why is Cora tripping like that? Don't he know he's going to die? Well, Cora didn't know that at, at that point. Why is, why are they complaining about not having meat and having, not having things or not having water? Don't they know in two chapters over that God's going to bring water from a rock? They didn't know that during that story. But as I said, those things are there as an example to you and I. So we can say to ourselves, why am I sitting here crying and complaining to God about not having what I think I should have? Don't I know a few six months from now or at the end of the year or next year, I'm going to have more than what I have now or I'll be in a better place than I am right now. Why am I even complaining about it? That thorn is there so that I can learn but I can get through that to the other side and I could be like Job or I can be like the children of Israel when they went to the promised land. OK, you're not going to fail. You're not going to fall because the word says that you're not unless you're an evildoer. If you're an evildoer, a child of darkness, you're probably not even listening to me anyway. So don't worry about it. Job chapter 11. Mm -mm, that's a lot of reading. Bear with me. All right, I'm gonna try to uh, move smoothly through this. Job chapter 11, we're going sequentially through this. I'm gonna start in verse one, okay? It's my man talking to Job, okay? And we're gonna see how he's trying to encourage Job. We all need a little encouragement, okay? When we're going through stuff and you see a brother or a sister going through something, it's great to, if you have the ability to do so, pick up the phone and encourage that person or text them or send them something. Send them a scripture, send them something because you know they're dealing with something. Let them know, you know, hey, God's with you. I'm with you. Let me know if you need something. Let me know, you know, I'm praying, whatever it is. We all need encouragement. We all go through things. So we know what it feels like when somebody encourages us. So we should do the same. Job 11, verse 1. Then answered Zophar, the Namathite, and said, should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man... Full of talk, be justified. Should thy lies be, or should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed? For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against me, or against thee, that thou would show thee the secrets of wisdom, and that they are doubled to that which is. I or know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. You guys remember I said a few minutes ago that there were a couple scriptures in here that showed that there is a penalty for the sins that we do. And this is the second one that I was referencing. He says, know therefore that God exacteth, and I'll kind of translate this, of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. Basically, God, because you are of his, will not punish you to the full extent that you deserve or that I deserve for the sins that we commit. Yes, we can pray and ask for forgiveness and we will have that. You will pay the price, but it won't be the full price. You guys remember as we talked about Sabbath, we've talked about other things. Um, they broke Sabbath back then, they were stoned, okay? They uh, did certain things. They they cursed their parents or they hit their parents. They were, they were killed, okay? So there are penalties for sin but thank God we will not get the full brunt of those penalties. We will pay something up, okay? So that's another scripture that's there. What I want to do, okay? Verse 12, 
for vain men will arise before vain men would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's coat. If thou prepare thy heart and stretch out thy hands towards him, if thy iniquity be in thy hand, put it far away. Get the sin away. Get the sin out. All right. Uh, remove that so that that's not a hindrance as you're going through when you're learning through your hardships, your thorns that you're going through. OK. And let not will wickedness dwell in thy, in thy tabernacles, in your homes, even within your body, because you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Verse 15. For then shall thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear. OK. And I want to I'll cut it off right there. This sounds like a typical pastor, okay? Like I said, we all need encouragement. If you know someone going through some stuff, make sure that you are able to encourage them in person and also pray for them when you go through your prayer time, okay? Um, I'm going to end with this. Yeah, I am. I'm going to end with this. Let me talk about this for a little bit. When we go through things, and, I, and I'll, I'll just say I've been here too, when we're going through stuff, there is a, a sense of pride that we have, um, at least as people that live in America, I can speak for us, where we really don't want other people to know the extent of what we're going through. Okay, So when we we dealing with stuff, you don't really want to go to synagogue, you don't really want to go to the Shabbat meetings, you don't really want to go to the quarterly, because you don't want to have to put on a smiling face and, hey, uh, everything's great. And you really don't want to put on or you really don't want to talk to people about what you're going through. So I'm just not going to show up to quarterly. I'm just not going to show up to synagogue. I'm just going to kind of lay back. I'm going to isolate myself. And then I'm just going to kind of deal with what I'm dealing with. That is the opposite of what you need to do. I understand that, you know, the Bible talks about forsake not the assembling of yourselves, right? There, there's strength in a corporate anointing. There's strength in being around people of like faith. And what darkness will try to do and is successful with some people sometimes is convince you that you really don't need to be around the people. Just stay off to yourself. And that way, you, you know, they can really just work on you and work on your mind and plant things into your, your mind and uh, get you to say things like, uh, you know, contrary to where God is trying to take you to. And so that that's something that we need to watch out for. Whenever you are at that place where you don't feel like you need to be around other people, that's exactly when you need to be around other people. When you feel like they're, and I mean, around other people, as in um, people of faith, uh, around those that are, you know, that are in the word, that try to live righteously, those that are at, you know, the quarterlies, you need to be around those people. Two reasons. One, because again, that encouragement is there. That corporate anointing is there. And where the anointing is, that's where the presence of God is, one of the same. And that will destroy that yoke in your life if there's a yoke to be destroyed. Okay? So always make sure that you do not allow the enemy to convince you that isolation is the best scenario as you're going through the thorns that you're going through. And I really wanted to talk about that. Is there anything else I need to do? Mm, yes, Job 23, sorry, Job chapter 23, 22, nope, 23, 23, I was right, go to Job chapter 23, this lesson is about to kind of bubble up and, and summarize into what I want to read here, um, and it, it's something that I, I cannot overlook or, or miss on. So I, I really need to read this. Um, and I'm probably going to kind of jump down to where it is. Go to Job chapter 23. And I want you to look at verse 11. I want to summarize kind of this series and even this lesson with something that's said here, because it, it, it's really powerful. And it's the reason um, you're able to get to that place where you have peace in the crap that we're going through, okay? Job 23, 11. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Okay, I've kept God's ways. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. It talks about fasting. So I wanna break this down as we read through it. So. Verse 11, he says he's held his way. He has not declined from the things that he knows he's supposed to do. 
Verse 12, he's talking about keeping God's commandments, speaking his word, and then he talks about fasting, of uh, uh, making his word or God's word more important than the food that goes in your mouth. Kind of sounds like something the Lord said, that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So fasting, keeping the commandments, I'll continue, verse 13. But he is in one mind who can turn him, and what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. Verse 14 is what I want you to highlight, write down. This is what I really need everybody to understand. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. He hath performeth the thing that is appointed to me. The troubles, the thorns, the things that we're dealing with in your life are appointed to you. It's not something that God just woke up one day and said, you know what? I'm just going to hold this person. Well, that's slang. I'm just going to do that person wrong just because that's what I feel like knowing. No, you guys understand. We went through a whole series called predestination. If you do not have that, you need to contact the office and ask. Brother Jared said, I need to ask about, you know, predestination and thorn in the flesh. Talk about both. Ask about both of those. It's really important. But we spent time talking about how before you are spirit, you are a spirit, okay? When it talks about giving up the ghost, a ghost is a spirit. I mean, it's common sense for those that have been around for a while, but we always get new people, so bear with me. You are a spirit locked in a fleshly body. When you die, your, your flesh, heart, brain stop functioning, and it releases the spirit that is within you. You go back to the world that you came from, that where God, the Lord God is, okay? So before your spirit, man, before your angelic spirit, I mean, it sounds wonderful, but it's just, it is what it is, was sent down into this earth to be born in the flesh. You were told things that you were going to do and accomplish upon this earth. You don't remember that, but yes, we all stood before the Lord God. He anointed us. He gave us certain things and abilities and responsibilities that we were supposed to accomplish being upon this earth. Now, as, as, as a part of that plan, okay, you just kind of think of a lifespan uh, of zero years to let's say a hundred years, that hundred year span, God has set certain times and places where certain things were going to happen in your life, good things and hard things. And those things, that is what appointed means. Okay. When, you know, I'm at work and somebody sends me a meeting invite, an appointment invite, that means at that certain time, these list of topics or these list of events are going to happen at that appointed time. Those are scheduled throughout your life and my life. And that is what that understanding. Yeah, that understanding that these things are appointed unto you. It's not happenstance. It's not by chance, though. It may not understand as you go through those things, because I tell my wife all the time, oh, I know why I had to deal with that two years ago. Because what I learned from that two years ago, I need right now. That makes sense. Okay, God knows what he's doing. So I'll have the same thing a, a year or two from now. Oh, I'm dealing with all the stuff I'm dealing with now so that when I'm at two years or three years down the line, I have that experience. I kind of know, no, nah, that ain't going to work. We ain't going to do it that way. I did it that way before. Didn't end well. Let's do it this way. That is what God is trying to get us to understand. So we need to stop with the, I don't think I can go any further. We need to stop with the, please help me. I don't know what to do. For those that have been in the ministry for a year or two, stop with that. Because that shows we don't yet understand that these things are appointed unto us. There's no shortcut around it. There's a going through that with flying colors. There's a understanding the pain before you get to the game. And I want to end with that, okay? So again, this is the series we're going through called The Thorn in the Flesh. You can contact the office about the donation amount for that. Um, but this is Cradle of Hope Ministries. I'm Jared Jacobs. We'll come back um, and do more of this series with other live recordings. Um, until then, you guys have a blessed week. Shalom.